Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome to this tutorial that you will learn how to animate your products like the video you saw at first. This tutorial is based on that Nike commercial shoe I made a few months ago and you can watch the full video on my YouTube channel. The good news is the entire project full of that commercial video is available on CG Trader and you can get it from the link in the description. The project follows consists of the shoes, the special box and all of the textures plus the whole animating setup for each item like cameras, lights, etc. So don't forget to check that. First of all, let me explain what's going on here. I have a pair of shoes that I parented each shoe with an empty cube object. So I can move and rotate this empty object to move and rotate the whole shoe. After that, I have a box that I rigged it with two bones. A bone to control the entire box and another bone to just control the door. And finally, I parented everything with an empty cube object. Therefore, I can rotate and move that empty object to move and rotate everything. If you are a beginner and you are wondering how you can parent your object, I'm going to tell you it's very easy. You just need to select a couple of objects and at last select that object you want to parent everything with it. Then just press Ctrl P and choose object or keep transform. And to release your parent you can select the parented object and press Alt P then clear parent. I want my whole plan to be 4 seconds, so I set my frame rate to 30 frames per second and I set the frame start to 1 and the end frame to 120. First thing I want to do here is animating the box, but before that I'm going to disable my shoes to get faster with the live rendering viewport. After that I select this empty cube and I hit end to bring this menu up or you can just drag this arrow to bring it up. Then while I'm at the frame 1, I right click on the Z axis of the rotation and I hit insert single keyframe. Inserting a single keyframe on a value helps you to insert keyframe on just one value. But if you choose insert keyframes, it inserts keyframes for all of the values of the location or rotation. Then I click here on the timeline to go to the frame 15 and I drag the Z value to something like roughly 15 degrees. And I right click on that and choose insert single keyframe again. Then I go for the frame 60 and I enter minus 360 degrees for the Z value this time. Then when I insert a single keyframe for this value we have an animation like this which is kind of boring and we can make it more interesting with the graph editor. So I go to the animation workspace that I customized it before by splitting my screens and you can do the same by right clicking here and choose vertical or horizontal splits. As you can see this is the graph editor and this is the timeline and I have two 3D viewports here that one of them will be my camera viewport whenever I added a camera to my scene. As you can see in the graph editor these handles are our keyframes and we can make our movements fast, slow, sharp or smooth by playing with these handles. So first I select the latest keyframe and I hit S to scale it up to something big like this because I want to end the rotating of the box softly. Then I select these two keyframes and I hit point in the number pad to get close to them. Then I select the second keyframe and I select the left handle of that and I hit S to scale it up like this. Then I select the right handle of the first keyframe and I scale it up a bit as well. As you can see our animation is more interesting now. Now I want to insert keyframe on the X rotation axis of the box. I go to the frame 40, I right click on the X axis of the rotation and I hit insert single keyframe. Then I go to the frame 50 and I enter 26 for the X value and I insert a single keyframe again. To animate the boxes door, I select my bone and I hit Ctrl tab to go to the pose mode. Then I select the armature that related to the door and now when I play with the X value from the transform menu I can open and close the box's door. Now I insert a single keyframe on the X axis by the value of 90 and I go to the frame 60 then I enter minus 50 degrees for the X value and I insert a single keyframe again. Now I can go to the graph editor and play with my keyframes to make my movements more fascinating.
Now it's time to animate my shoes and I start with the right one. I select the empty controller object and I go to this menu and I hit I on these location axes to insert keyframes on all of them. Or you can just right click on them and choose insert keyframes. I do the same for the rotation values and I'm aware of that I'm at the frame 65. Then I go to the frame 85 and I move and rotate my empty cube to where I want to be. You can either change the values from the transform menu or you can use shortcuts. Just press G to move an object and you can also press G plus X, Y, Z to move an object on those axes. And you can do the same for rotation by pressing R with X, Y, Z. I just place the shoe by changing its location and I play with the rotation to make it like it's on the ground. Then I insert keyframes on all of the values of location and rotation at the frame 85. Then I do the same for the next shoe but with the difference that the second shoe is moving by a delay like 5 or 10 frames. And I don't care about clipping between shoes and box for now because I will edit my keyframes on the graph editor and those overlaps will disappear. So now when I got down with inserting keyframes, I open this menu and these channels in graph editor. I can see all of the channels of the keyframes on location and rotation values here and I can mute and hide them as well. So first of all, I want to make my Z location movement faster than any other movements. So I hide every channel but the Z location channel. Then I select the first keyframe and I hit R to rotate it like minus 70 degrees because I want it to start immediately after the frame 65. Then I select the second keyframe and I hit S to scale it up because I want to end my action smoothly. Then I'm going to do the same what I did with the second keyframes to the second keyframe of the X location and rotation values to make them faster and smoother. I can play with the other keyframes if I want but when I got happy with everything I can go for the next shoe and do the same. This handle type that we are working with is Bezier and I think we are very lucky to use this because as you can see it can be very flexible and we can do a lot with that. I created a short tutorial recently that is about keyframe handle types and how to work with them. So if you don't understand some parts of this tutorial you can go and watch that as well. For clipping and overlapping like this, I usually keep playing with the keyframes in the graph editor to change the object's movement timing and fix it like that. I hide my shoes and I just keep the empty cube to see what I did so far. Now I'm gonna set up my camera setting. I press Shift A and add a camera to my scene, then I press Shift A again. I go to the empty menu and I choose plane axis. This is gonna be the object that my camera will track to it. I select the camera and I go to the object constraint properties and I add a constraint that called track to and I select the empty object as the target. Now as you can see if I move my camera, the view lock to the empty object and if I move my empty object I can change the view of my camera. So now while my camera is selected I go to the camera properties, viewport display and I increase the pass apart out up to 1. You can press 0 on the number pad to go to the camera view. Now I have my camera view on the left and I can change the position of the camera on the right to the viewport. I hit 7 on the number pad to go to the top view and I press G to change my camera location to somewhere like here. Then I move it up by pressing G and Z. After that I go to the frame 40 and I insert a single keyframe on the X location axis of the camera. Then I go to the frame 85 where the shoes dropped out of the box already and I change the X location value of the camera to somewhere like here and I insert a single keyframe again. Then I go to the frame 17 and I select that empty object, I tracked it to the camera. Here in the object properties, I can insert a single keyframe on each value by clicking on these points. I insert keyframes on the Y and Z location values, then I go to the frame 85 and I change its location to where that is at the center of my shoe. And I insert keyframes on those values again. 
now as you can see it's my empty object and it moves along with my shoes. I go back to the frame 70 again, I select my camera and I insert single keyframe for the Y and Z values. Then I go to the frame 85 and every action ended there and I set my camera in front of my shoes exactly like that empty object. And I insert keyframes on the Y and Z values again. Now I feel it's a bit far away from my shoes so I change the X location value as well and I make my camera more close to the shoe. Now I can replace the X location value keyframe by right clicking on that and choose replace single keyframe. I'm almost done with adding my keyframes. Now it's time to go in the graph editor and edit my keyframes. And first thing I want to show you is how to make a part of your action slow motion and makes it like it stops for a moment. So I click here and dragging to find where I want my camera to be slow and focus on those shoes in the box. Now I'm at the frame 62 and in the graph editor I'm going to open these keyframes channels and I'm going to hide the Y and Z values. I can insert a single keyframe on the X location value and as you can see a new handle appears here. I can select it and rotate it by pressing R to make a speed bump in this slope. So when it comes to this keyframe it goes slow and I'm going to select the last keyframe and scale it up to continue fast after the middle keyframe. I can also take it back a few frames to make it happen earlier but in this case I'm going to leave it like this. I can select a track object and change its keyframes place by pressing G in the timeline and I take them backwards if I see it doesn't move along with the shoes. Yeah guys, I told everything you need to know to do a project animation like this and however it's almost done but if I want to continue working on this project it just will be playing with the keyframes and busier handles. I hope you got something useful from this tutorial and if so please tell me in the comments and let me know if you want a second part of this tutorial that is gonna be about this exploding product animation. Don't forget to subscribe and check out the Patreon and Gumroad. Thanks for watching and goodbye.